Hello, everyone. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yeah. So my name is Urvika Gola, and uh, I'm an engineering student by pursuing my bachelor's. And uh, I, uh, I was uh, outreach around 13, interned with Debian. And if you might have looked at the schedule in the, uh, on the Debian website, uh, there was a co-speaker with me. But unfortunately, he uh, wasn't able to come. So I would be briefly covering up his part as well. So uh, let me, uh, so my journey being an open source uh, developer, or more likely an open source contributor, uh, started with a different uh, program called Outreachy. And Outreachy is an initiative which uh, aims at uplifting the participation of underrepresented sections in technology. And uh, uh, it has played a very significant role in doing that. And the reason I think why it has been uh, being, uh, it has been so successful in uplifting the participation of underrepresented sections is uh, that they, it particularly, the outreachy program particularly uh, targets women and other sections. With, and uh, it has uh, really helped, in, uh, helped me as a person in getting started with op uh, contributing to open source. And uh, <coughs> so I reached out to Debian through outreachy. An outreachy uh, program happens twice in a an year, and organizations which make open source software, they uh, participate and they hire interns to work remotely for them for over three months. So I decided to work on a project which was improving voice and video chat communication. Uh, it comes under free RTC uh, project. Uh, the reason why I chose to work on this project because uh, first the aim of this project was very simple. That was to replace proprietary software, uh, 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 which um, software uh, which are using being used as uh, free calling and uh, for communication. And the second one was I the programming languages which are being used in this uh, project. I was uh, very comfortable in using those languages. So Outreachy program has really helped me to bridge the gap between coding and contributing. I uh, had three amazing mentors, uh, Daniel, Juni Juliana, and Bruno. Uh, I think my mentor, uh, they played a very pivotal role right from the start and making me feel very comfortable working with open source software. And they exemplified how comfortable it is to work. And uh, I still remember the, when I was getting started with the program, I had feelings of doubt whether I'll be able to give my best or not or whether I'm not technically good enough or, or not. But, uh, and I still remember I kept refining the small email which I sent to my uh, project mentor, uh, Daniel, in the beginning, introducing myself and the project I would like to work on. And uh, I think that was the most courageous thing I did, to send a simple email introducing myself. And after then, he uh, replied very promptly, and uh, he, uh, he exemplified how comfort, uh, how really comfortable it is to work in uh, open source software. So uh, the particular project I was working on was, uh, uh, was Lumicall. So Lumicall is an open source soft, uh, is an Android application, which is used to make uh, encrypted uh, voice calls. And you can also send SIP messages across. So uh, the good thing about it is uh, that it has end-to-end -end encryption. There is no man in the middle attack. And uh, the dialer uses SIP, uh, open standards like SIP. And, uh, it, and uh, since it uses SIP, the interconnectivity between other telephony systems is very uh, easy. And you can, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, you connect to other uh, softwares like Jitsi or uh, JS Communicator through Lumicall. And uh, the, the registration process in Lumical is very easy. Uh, you just have to add your, enter your phone number, and we'll be able to create a SIP address for you. So uh, I'll talk about, uh, and uh, I'll talk about a few uh, contributions I did in the beginning of my internship. So uh, I had to work on a white labeling concept. I did not know what white labeling was. So then I started to research on the topic. Uh, so white labeling is a product uh, which one company owns or produces, which other company purchases or rents it, and they uh, make it appear as if they have made it. 
So this might sound very confusing but in, uh, and very contradicting that uh, the other company is taking away its product, but in real life, this is something which is agreed upon by both the parties. Uh, so since Lumicall is an Android application, I had to figure out how to implement white labeling in Lumicall. So uh, just like any application, you have many versions of the applications. For example, the release version, the debug version, and uh, the pro version or the free version. So similarly, I created a white label version. So the aim was not to create multiple copies. Uh, for example, not have n different copies for n different clients who would like to purchase Lumicall's white label version. So the aim was to have just one copy and have multiple white uh, label versions of it. So let me uh, not go into the detailing of how I implemented it. Uh, so this was the second uh, feature I worked on. So since Lumicall is used to make encrypted voice calls and um, users who are using Lumicall might have more than one SIP IDs, one might be for their work purpose or their home purpose, and they would like to uh, designate quiet times and uh, on their work uh, SIP ID only. So uh, this feature uh, was implemented and uh, and so I, uh, so instead of giving just a simple switch button, which would say on and off, uh, we decided to give it a more detailing, for, for example, what work days and what time uh, you would like to uh, designate your silent mode on your work email or your home email. So, uh, SIP ID, sorry. So uh, this was a very fun uh, feature which I added into Lumicall. So whenever you uh, use any uh, application with to send messages across, you might uh, notice a bubble around the text messages. So this is not just a simple bubble, it is a nine patch image, which resizes itself according to the text size and the font size and text length. So, uh, and to create a nine patch image, there are specialized tools uh, which Android provides uh, to create a nine patch image. And to save the image as a nine patch image, you just have to uh, uh, prefix, uh, for example, if the image name is image.png, you have to uh, uh, save it as image.9.png, the number nine. So this, so, so the Lumicall uh, SIP message screen was a bit primitive, so to make it more interactive, we added the nine patch behind it. So as I said, uh, my co-speaker is not here today, so, and I would be covering his part as well. So uh, Pranav uh, was uh, GSOC 16 in turn with Debian, and uh, he, uh, his mentors were Daniel and Saul. So he added this publish feature in Lumicall, and publish feature is basically uh, when a, a user in Lumicall would uh, constantly send a ping command after a few interval of time just to, uh, just to signify that the user is online, and uh, so that the other, uh, other tools like Jitsi or JS Communicator can identify whether the person is online, available or not. And he also created a SIP enroller, uh, SIP enroller uh, library which uh, basically allows developers to add SIP, um, SIP enroller functionality. And so to use this library, you just have to import it and call it normal function, and you would be able to use uh, uh, SIP enroller uh, functionality. So uh, that is it. And I would also like to share how uh, my journey being an outreach intern was. For example, even before the uh, internship began, my mentor, he uh, introduced me to the Debian community, community through a, a voice video chat on Jitsi, and that is when I got to know about Jitsi as an um, open software which is used for vo uh, video calls. And uh, there were times when uh, you, uh, figuring, while figuring out the best code to, product the, to produce the best results, I was not... Uh, paying attention towards the coding syntax or the indentation or the naming conventions which, by, which are being used. So since an op any open source software has got uh, contributions by many uh, developers around the world, and they have their own naming convention style, et cetera, and you have to adhere to it. Uh, so that was something I was not paying much, much attention to. And my mentors, while reviewing, reviewing my code, they gave me true feedback, which helped me to grow as a developer. And uh, so I would really like to thank my mentors for being there and uh, finding ways to guide me, but they left enough room for me to explore on my own. Uh, that is it. I would like to 
thank the DEBCON team also, without whom I wouldn't be able to stand here and speak to all of you. Thanks. Any questions, if anybody has? So for me, uh, I think uh, outreach was something in, in initially I thought I wouldn't be able to do. And I was so scared of uh, contributing to an open source software, uh, thinking that I wouldn't be able to do. So outreach, as, uh, as you know, it aims to uplift the participation of the underrepresented section. I think for me, it really helped me to do that. And, uh, uh, and since outreach, uh, not like GSOC, it has it hasn't got hundreds of students it and it has got like around 50 students per round and each round happens twice in a year so that makes it 100 students per year so i think it is reaching out to a significant amount of women uh, uh, and uh, keeping in mind the funds which they have to uh, you know uh, have in order to pay their interns so uh, I think it is reaching out to a significant amount of women. And me, as an outreachy intern, I think I'm able to reach out to more women around my campuses and to v women developers I know, uh, you know helping them out uh, for outreachy round, uh, outreachy, how to prepare for outreachy, and uh, just, you know, uh, just telling them about the program. And I think just to create awareness is also a big step towards a greater good. How did you hear about Outreachy? Yeah, so uh, I think it's always good to surround yourself with people who are there to give information and to support you. Uh, the, my co-speaker, Pranav, he, uh, so he put up uh, Outreachy posters around my camp university. So that is when I got to know about Outreachy program and about Debian. So great talk. Can you just go back to the slide with the messaging? Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That one, yes. So I just want to admit that was my implementation on the left hand side <laughs> and it's Avika's work on the right hand side. So she deserves all the credit for the, the appealing user interface that has been added to Bloomical. Um, Avika mentioned um, the help from uh, the mentors, including uh, Juliana Lubak. Um, Juliana originally applied for Outreachy. Um, at the time, we couldn't um, actually fund every applicant we got for Outreachy, but she was subsequently selected in the next round of Google Summer of Code, because um, we often get a lot more funding, a lot more places there. So, um, so people often go from being a um, an applicant in one program to becoming a mentor. So in, in this case, um, Juliana helped mentor. And Juliana also helped mentor Liz, who was doing another project at the same time. Um, so it, Outreachy has been really successful. I, I think Karen Sandler is running a, a session about Outreachy later this week. So that's in the schedule as well. That's it. Yeah, thank you for hearing me out. Thanks a lot. <laughs>